Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Goha Thakurta. The government of India is desperately short of money. And it needs money quickly. One of the ways in which this government intends raising this money is by divestment, disinvestment, selling the shares of public sector undertakings. And two of the major companies the government has in mind are Air India and Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. In this episode, I discuss the issues relating to divestment of the government stake in Bharat Petroleum with Prabir Purokaisto, Editor-in-Chief of NewsClick. Prabir, BPCL is the shining jewel, the proverbial Maharatna. It's a highly profitable enterprise. And the government, you think, will have, it'll be smooth sailing to sell the government, entire stake of the government, which is a little over 53% in this company, because the group of secretaries have gone ahead and given permission. It was on the 30th of September. And this is under the new department in the Ministry of Finance called DIP, DIPM, DIPM, Department of Investment and Public Asset Management. Do you think it will be smooth sailing? Well, let's start with the acronym DPAM. We could also call it the Department of Disinvestment and Public Mismanagement, Asset Mismanagement, because what they're doing is bundling Air India, which is a loss-making company, which has become a loss-making company due to various reasons, which can, we can discuss another day. But along with it, what it has done is to bundle a company, which is not only making profits, is making a huge amount of profits. And in fact, if you see the share price, the book value of the share, which was about 19 rupees per share, that on that they have made last year, what you said, 7,000 crore of dividend payment, more than 7,000 crore of dividend payment, but it is 190% of the share value. The figures for 2018-19 financial year, the company's turnover was around 3.4 lakh crores, and the net profit was over 7,000 crores, 7,132 crores. Which means it has paid off the bank loans, which are from the public sector banks. It has, it has made the payment it is supposed to make and also paid taxes, which would have also been of the roughly of the order of seven to 10,000 crores, if not more. So if you look at all of this, forget about its value to the exchequer, which comes out in different forms. <coughs> But purely in terms of what is commonly raised against the public sector, that this is, a, this is always loss-making, it's inefficient, and so on, this is by that account a highly profitable public sector undertaking, paying the government much more than the investment it has ever made in the company. Okay. Okay? But I'd like to also look at it from another point of view, that the DPAM or DPAM, I prefer to still call it DPAM. DPAM's basic offer is for the entire shareholding, 53%, because 25% is owned by the public in different forms, but also probably owned by government uh, investment uh, institutions like oil in, Indian uh, life insurance company, life insurance company and, so on. and other oil companies as well. Other oil companies as well. So, in in order to give it to completely private hands, it has to shell, sell sell entire fifty three percent of it of the share That's that it holds. So, who is it intended for? One minute, one minute. Before we look at who is it intended for, who are the likely buyers, let's take a few steps back. Okay. Let's look, go back into history a little bit. Because if you recall, during Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee's time in, uh, in, in 2002, there was a move made to also sell Bharat Petroleum. But the government could not because it, there was an act of parliament. When, when what was previously Burma Shell had been nationalized in 1976. Now that act had to be amended. Now that act has indeed been repealed in 2016. So the road has been cleared. But let's go back in history. Burma Shell, which was set up in the 20s, was a joint venture between Royal Dutch Shell, Burma Oil, 
and Asiatic Petroleum India. It was a, a major, an oil major. And, and if you look back in time, it played a very, very key role in both refining and distribution. And I'll tell you more about where it is today. So if you look back in time, this was in fact, together with Caltex, which became HPCL, Indo-Burma Petroleum. This was really during Indira Gandhi's time, in fact, the peak of the emergency when BPCL I became it was what a, it is. I think it was um, privatized, uh, it was nationalized just before that, but I could be wrong. 1976. 1976, is, is, okay. Right. Now, look, let's look at what the Indian oil sector was before. Indian oil sector did have Oil India Limited before that, but both Caltech and Shell were major players in the Indian market. If you remember when we were children, we would see their billboards all over the country. Okay, wherever you go, you had Caltech oil, comp oil pumps or you had Burma Shell oil pumps. And you had <coughs> SO, Standard Oil. Standard Oil. So these were... The So-called seven sisters that used to... These were really the oil majors, which in fact are the oil monopolies, as you said, seven sisters, Rockefeller's oil monopolies, and the Anglo-Dutch company, which let's not forget, was the <coughs> other big global player, particularly as Britain's empire was quite large before the Second World War. <laughs> and <coughs> it is the Anglo-Dutch which Mossadegh had nationalized and paid the price with his subsequent debt being deposed and, the Shah and, of Iran. and being deposed and spending the rest of his life essentially in house arrest. So Mrs. Gandhi's taking over of the these oil companies was a major landmark in the fact that at least irrespective of what happened during emergency, which we all know and are critical of, but at least it also marked a step towards establishing that she was trying to do something, quote unquote, for the nation, and she had nationalist aims uh, as well. But it is a continuation, as I said, from the bank nationalization and other steps that she had taken after coming into power. Insurance, coal, steel, and, and it was part of that same set. Part of, of the same set, set of things. Initiatives. It ended with this oil uh, amendment, uh, what you're talking about it, uh, that is a part of a parliamentary act by which it took over the assets. And the BPCL also has assets not only in refining, refining as one okay. part, but also in distribution. Correct. So in fact, fast forward to the present, the Maharatna, Maharatna called Bharat Petroleum Corporation is today the second largest oil marketing company in the country. It operates four refineries, Mumbai. You can see those flares when you go travel in Mumbai. Kochi in Kerala, Bina in Madhya Pradesh, and Numaligar in uh, Assam. We'll come to Numaligar a little later. But it has today the capacity to, you know, refine over three, 38 million tons of crude, more importantly, and this is what probably makes its assets so attractive for a private buyer, it operates over 15,000 petrol pumps across the country and has over 6,000 cooking gas or liquefied petroleum gas LPG distributor, distributors. Uh, distributorships. So would you say that these are the assets which uh, the private players who are lasciviously eyeing the government's 53.29% stake in uh, uh, BBCL are looking at? If we take the market value of this company, which, is, which has two parts to it, one is the refining part, the other is the distribution part. Let's compare the refining capacity and its value to what would be the value of SR Oil, which is taken over by Rosneft and Trafigura Consortium. They had taken it over for something like $12.9 billion and it was 12, 20 million tons of capacity against 38 million ton of capacity of BPCL. BPCL so right. BPCL is about twice the size of SR oil. If you club with that, the, the net distribution network you've talked about, and we'll come to the value of the distribution network in a minute, then that network would probably double the value of the company. 
Now, if you take that, you're really looking at just the refinery alone, the four refineries alone, to net about 25 to 30 billion dollars and if you add to that the distribution side you're probably talking about double that value and with 53 percent shares that that are there you this is really you're also transferring majority of the shares so you're really transferring ownership I'll, I'll just add a few facts right now the three major public sector oil marketing companies indian oil bharat petroleum and Hindustan Petroleum together have over three fourths of the, the, the all, all the marketing happens, and gradually now Reliance, SR, and now the, it's open now to the foreign companies. They are now entering. So once BPCL is also no longer in the public sector, it could be that the pub, public sector's um, share share of oil marketing would come down fairly drastically from about three fourths to perhaps around half. So we are talking of something like 25% of the distribution being with BPCL or probably about 30% of the distribution being with BPCL today. So we are really talking about, to my mind, that when you talk about the refining capacity being worth 25 to $30 billion, you are really doubling roughly the cost. The total value in the market for this company would be $50 billion and at 53% because you are transferring ownership, Roughly, it should be between 25 to 30 billion dollars is what a strategic sale of 53 percent should really get the government. Okay. This is the amount that you'd get. But what does the company which buys it gets, which you rightly said, is not only the refining capacity, but the distribution. Absolutely. And that is possibly, uh, uh, perhaps in certain respects, quite a lucrative part of the whole deal. It's not only the lucrative part. It is a strategic issue because both SR and Reliance don't have the distribution capacity, but they have refining capacity. Correct. So therefore, the distribution would be attractive to Rosneft, led consortium, which bought SR Oil, and Reliance. And That's looking right. at the kind of These sweetheart uh, relationship with the government of India that uh, okay. they so have. It, so since you've already come to this point, when you look at the major players who are likely to be bidding for the government's 53.29% stake in Bharat Petroleum, there are about five names which make the list. First, obviously, Reliance Industries Limited. Then comes British Petroleum, BP. Though BP has a tie-up also with Reliance for the gas part of it in Krishna Godavari. Then you have Kuwait's Petrol. Go Kuwait Petroleum. You also have Malaysia's Petronas, but there's also a big player, and that is Saudi's Aramco. Now, Shell, you must remember, has a stake in Aramco, and Aramco and Reliance are, I mean, according to Reliance, Aramco will be buying a major stake in Reliance Industries. Now, these are going to be the major players. So it's not just Reliance, but the big multinational including Shell and Aramco, who are looking at Bharat Petroleum's assets? I would say that Aramco would partner, if it does come in, with Reliance in this venture. Because Reliance has a huge requirement of capital, as we know, that it is essentially underwriting the telecom part of its empire. It has other investments it, is, it has made or is making. It has a huge overhang of debts and without the Aramco 20%, I don't think Reliance is going to be able to put in a big bid. There are some minor hitches in the whole thing, but most people believe they can be sorted out. If you recall the Assam Accord, as part of the Assam Accord when Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister, Numligar refinery was taken over by BPCL. They bought over 61% of the shares. But the Assam government has a stake, I think about 12.35%. And Oil India Limited also has a stake. About, in Numaligar. Yes, in Numaligar, about 12, uh, you know, uh, more than that. You know, so um, you think these things are minor and they'll be sorted See, because out. Numaligar is a small refinery compared <coughs> to the other ones. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, it is political significance, as you have already said, Assam Accords, Assam. But that's true for the Northeast as a whole, okay. that BPCL has some stake because of the Dupal Numaliga refinery for the Northeast India as well. But leaving that out, that can be, as you said, uh, it can be sorted out. It's a minor hitch. The big issue is 
if Reliance is a bidder, I would club Aramco along with it. Okay. I do not think it's going to make an independent bid. You know, that way even um, Mo Mozambique, LNG has a partnership with their Mina refinery. So these are issues I think that can really be sorted out. Uh, yes, Oil India owns... 12.3, uh, sorry, 26 percent and Assam government owns 12.3 percent in Numalikar. But wait, the employees are bound to resist it. 12,500 employees. Roughly of? over to 12,000 yeah. employees. But the government also seems to be in one great hurry to go ahead with this whole deal because it desperately needs this money before the end of the financial year, which, which doesn't leave it with very much time. Do you think they'll be able to go ahead? Well, I'm not going to look at the crystal ball on that count because what big players will do in terms of bids are not known. I do not think a bid of the size that everybody has to make can be sorted out in a matter of months. So I think we are talking about four to six months minimum, if not longer, to sort out the legalities of this, sort out how, as you said, the Numaligar issue is, has to be handled and also get the players do their due diligence before they actually can make bids and sort this okay, process out. Okay, we'll, we'll have to wait and watch. But even if they get a, a some kind of bidding process on and get some figures, they will probably put it in the budget and say, you know, some, what what is it called? book balancing can be done or shall we say creative accounting can be done by which they can include the sale in the budget to show that their deficit is lower because if you see the whole game is an attempt to show low deficit by transferring all the deficits as well as all the loans onto the books of the public sector only problem is if you continue to sell the public sector how do you continue to do this that's an open question the government has to answer and they all for the future are you selling the family silver to pay for the grocery bills or to pay the butler, the famous statement? Yes, and this I would say is not the silver. This is the gold. The gold. Okay. Or the diamonds, if you like. Or oil, the Bharatna. Oil, oil India and BPCL are really gold, even today. Uh, and okay. the proof that the Indian public sector has made huge profits over the lifetime of its uh, of its existence. The only thing is when we took look at, we look at only those which have failed or which have not made uh, profits due to various reasons, we do not look at the huge profits they have made for 50, 60, 70 years of their lives. Okay. Thank you so much, Prabir, for uh, giving us your views. And we'll have to wait and watch how quickly the government will be able to sell India's second largest oil marketing company and that will reduce the role of the government sector, the public sector in oil distribution uh, and it will come down from around three-fourths to around half and time will tell who will be able to buy a majority stake in this Maharatna. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching News Click. Thank <laughs> you.